It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview Lindsey Flouch, a U.S. track and field national track and field player. How are you doing today? I am good. How are you? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to play professional track and field? That is a good question. I actually didn't. I went from level to level. So when I was in high school, I always just wanted to like beat the upper class and be conference champ and then when I got the opportunity to go to college it was kind of the same thing like um, I went after the conference record and then to bank it onto the national level and then I was actually just kind of given an opportunity after I made the 2012 Olympic trials Um, and then that's where I really started to realize like oh I can actually do this. What was your time like in college at Southern Alabama? It was good. I chose the college actually because they let me um, play volleyball and run track um, and because I'm actually from Wisconsin. So I chose to go down there and um, it was an eye opener for me. It was a very different culture there as well, Um, but it made me grow and it was actually a great opportunity and it kind of led me to where I am today. What is it like to compete in multiple events in track and field? I have never been a one sport, one event athlete. I started out when I was younger and our parents made us do something. It didn't matter if it was sports, like we had to play an instrument, we had to do something um, outside of the house. And so whenever we started something, we weren't allowed to quit it until the end of the season. So I started out with like soccer and swimming, um, basketball and then volleyball. Um, And then that kind of led me into track. So when I got on the track, like I just couldn't sit at a track meet all day and just do one event. Um, And so throughout high school for us in Wisconsin, you're allowed to do um, three track events and then you have to have one field event. And so I always maxed out and did four events. And then I actually didn't learn what the heptathlon was until I was in college. And um, I had a pretty rough season my freshman year in track and so then we decided to just try the HEP and my first conference HEP I ended up winning. So. What is it now like to compete as a half allow? Um, that career is now over, but it was a transition, but it was always learning. Like you were always getting better at something. You could always learn something with seven different events. Like you haven't perfected it yet. And so um, I'm still, even though I've kind of retired from the track and field um, on the heptathlon, uh, I still believe there's more potential in me and I haven't reached my potential in all seven of those events. So that's what's kind of fun about it is you know that there's like no cap and you can always get better. What has it been like for you to win silver medals in track and field? That was a crazy year. Um, That's actually when I moved to Texas and my husband started coaching me and I knew there was a lot more in me than I had reached. Um, It wasn't actually a great performance for me. Um, It came down to the 800, which if you know heptathletes, we dread the 800. Um, But I had kind of just grown to love that event and know that like everyone else hates it, like it's going to be over with at some point. Um, and so it came down to the 800. I was actually, I think in like eighth place. Um, and my husband was just like, go out and run and see what happens. And I had a PR personal record in the 800 and I ended up jumping all the way up to second place. So it just shows you can do whatever you put your mind to. And, uh, it was unbelievable to get on that podium. Finally, um, after all the USA teams I had been on and all the USA um, championships I had been to. How has it been like as having your husband as your coach versus having somebody else as your coach? 
Uh, <laughs> it's been a struggle. I'm not going to lie. So I've had multiple coaches throughout my career, which has been a blessing because they're all great at different things. Um, it actually helped our relationship grow a lot because we had to learn how to separate our relationship to the track and field relationship, the coach athlete relationship, um, which is really hard because he's always like, he's my best friend. Um, and so I feel like I can say and do anything around him. So like when I would get really frustrated on the track, I would take it out on him. And so we had to learn how to like handle that in a way of, and he always wanted me to be better. I always wanted to get better. So then when I wasn't getting better, I was frustrated at him because I didn't know what to do. And so we kind of just learned and developed and um, it's been great for our relationship. It's been good me stepping off the track now because I will not lie, a lot of our fights did come from the track, from the coach athlete part. What, what is it like to compete in the US Olympic team trial? It's an experience. Um, I was blessed to be able to go in 2012. Um, that was my last, my senior year in college. And so that was like the cherry on top. Um, I had lost my grandpa between nationals and the trials. And so it was just one of those things to step on the track and experience it. 2016, like I put everything into it. Um, I kind of knew what to expect. The nerves were still there. Um, this one obviously was clearly a little bit different. Um, I just wanted to compete one last time on the new track in the new stadium. Oregon is an amazing place to compete. Um, I wish COVID wasn't happening because um, the athletes that got to go this year didn't really get to experience that Olympic trials um, environment because it's actually an amazing opportunity and everyone that gets to go is blessed to be able to go. What was it like this year to compete in it, of course, due to being pregnant? It was actually a lot more relaxed and chill, I guess I would say, um, because I didn't have any expectations. I didn't know what was going to happen. I was very sick early on. I um, hadn't been able to train to my full cap. And I had also gained about, I think, 15 or 20 pounds, like very early on in my pregnancy. And so it was a lot of different changes. And so I actually went into it like the most relaxed I'd ever been. So I actually got to enjoy the experience more than I did in um, 2012 and 2016. What was the preparation like before you ever got to race? At the trials? Yes. I, in 2020 of January, I actually left and moved away from my fiance at the time, now husband, um, to train with the multi-stars and a couple pro athletes. And I had quit my job, gave up everything. I was training twice a day, six hours a day, um, very focused on my nutrition. And when COVID hit, I moved back with my husband. And so I was back to basically training on high school tracks in my community um, by myself. I was trying to film myself so I could get feedback from my coach and then my husband. And so once I became pregnant, it kind of was just a day-to-day -day thing and I had talks. My husband wasn't coaching me at the time. So I had talks with both my coach and my husband. And we just decided to literally take it day by day and hour by hour, however I felt for that day, um, because it was such a transition. Um, and I was just had to very, I had to pay very good attention to my body. And so that was literally my training up until the Olympic trials. I was lucky to have like three full normal training weeks before the Olympic trials. So I felt confident because like one of the things we were worried about is falling in the hurdles. Was I going to be able to make my three steps to each hurdle, um, which ended up not being an issue at all. Um, but like there was different things that I had to worry about balance, um, which ended up like, I feel pretty normal besides, you know, the morning sickness and things that go along with pregnancy. Of course, what are some of the differences between training on a high school track versus a college track? Um, usually the facilities on a college track are nicer, um, than a high school track. I actually have three high school tracks in my community within 15 minutes that I, um, go to depending on what equipment I need, because they have different equipment, like better sand pits for long jump, better high jump mats. Um, but I've kind of learned ever since I got out of college, like 
you can make anything work. When I was in high school, we would like, we were in Wisconsin, so it was cold. Um, we would, so, there would be snow on the track. So we either shovel lane out or we would run in the hallways. And so I've just learned to adapt to whatever I'm given to. And that's not an excuse to affect your training. Of course, leading up to the Olympic tri team trials, were there any like jitters that you had or like you couldn't do it and stuff? It wasn't necessarily jitters about the actual competition and, and being able to do the events because I have been doing the heptathlon since 2009. I've been doing track since, I don't know, 2003. Um, and so it wasn't that. It was actually, I was, I was trying to hide the baby bump. So we went clothes shopping to try to find tank tops with different designs on it and t-shirts because I honestly didn't want that to be the spotlight. I wanted to really go out and just see how I could compete. Um, but I learned that one, I can't hide it. <laughs> Two, um, that I'm proving that women and pregnant um, women are capable of a lot of things. And I am so glad I decided to go in my normal uniform that I would wear instead of trying to hide it. Um, and then also for safety aspects with the trainers, I had to be very open with them. Of course, talking about that, what is it like to be an inspiration for women to still go out and do become an athlete and still have that athlete and motherhood? I never expected it um, to come down to this point. And I always try to inspire, especially the youth. I give back, I teach, I um, try to give them life lessons that I've learned throughout my career. Um, I didn't really have role models or people to help me about like the college experience and how to go about getting scholarships and how to talk to coaches. Like I didn't have that. And so to be able to help the next generation of women and athletes to tell them like, this is what I've been through. This is what I've experienced to help them any little way into the future. Um, that's always where I had went to, but now being able to inspire women, like just move. Like, it doesn't matter what you're doing. You don't have to go to the Olympic trials pregnant, um, but you can do anything. You can do your career. You can go and work out. Um, you like, don't necessarily listen to people telling you, you shouldn't do that, or you can't do that. You got to listen to your own body and know what you are capable of. Who are some people that you look up to and that inspire you in your career? As I said, in the beginning, I've always looked up to like, I guess you would say little people above me. Like when I was a freshman in high school, I always looked up to the seniors. It, it was the same thing when I went to college. I was a freshman looking up to the seniors. Um, I've been very blessed to work with some great people. Um, one was um, Barbara Nawaba. She was my teammate. Um, she made the 2016 Olympic team and her work ethic is amazing. Her um, spirit, her positivity is incredible. And so I was able to work alongside that, which just makes you better. Um, also, Erin Pack, who's now Bloomer, um, she worked out with me in the weight room. She was um, the bronze medalist in bobsled. And the same thing, like I just was able to like anything. We would talk about anything. We talk about life. And she was just a mentor to me, not just on the track, not just working out, but outside of it, just in life in general. So those are two definite people that have been a great influence in my life. What has the transition been like for you from going from being on the track to now retiring and stepping back and, of course, enjoying motherhood? It hasn't necessarily hit me. It's been a crazy three weeks. Um, I've traveled two weekends of it. I've been um, crazy busy with work. Um, I teach adult and kids classes. And so I don't think it's necessarily hit me. Um, I think it'll probably hit me after the baby's born. Um, just because I haven't had time to settle down yet. <laughs> of course, what are some of your future plans when you are thinking about it? Are you going to still be involved in the sport, even though you're not racing in it? Yes, definitely. And um, I still am going to go out there and do workouts just for fun, um, where it's actually fun because it's kind of been a job for the last couple of years. Uh, but also like giving back, like we do a track club here for kids on weekends. Um, me and Chris Thomas, who's a chiropractor, but he was also a pro hurdler. And so we're just trying to give back to the next generation in that sport, because we know 
Um, it is hard and there's not very many people that can help in that aspect. And so we just want to be able to give back to the kids in any way possible. That's wonderful. What advice would you give somebody looking to become a track athlete on the professional level? Enjoy it one to start with um, and just work hard um, every day. You do have to give up your life basically. And I say that in a very nice way. Um, I missed a lot of family gatherings. I moved all the way from Wisconsin down to Alabama for college to begin with. And then I actually moved out to California when I first turned pro. And so you have to give up things that you normally wouldn't and that most people wouldn't do. And so you have to be willing to do that, but be okay with it. Like I was totally okay with it. I knew what I wanted and I was going to go out after it. And so I changed my diet. I changed where I lived, my training environment. So you just have to go out, enjoy it, enjoy every moment of it. Know there's going to be more hard moments than there is easy or um, fun moments, I should say, but just go after it, give whatever you can into it. And at the end of the day, you'll appreciate it. That's wonderful advice. What advice would you give female athletes that are mothers now that are still wanting to compete on the athletic side? Keep doing what you're doing or were doing before pregnancy. And for those people that want to become mothers or um, are planning on trying to get pregnant, I suggest whatever you want to do during pregnancy, you start now so that you're able to do it during pregnancy. And that's what a lot of people uh, were afraid of when I competed at the Olympic trials. But I literally got the blessing from doctors saying that as long as you were doing it before, you can do it now. So don't change, but just listen to your body. And for those that are pregnant, just listen to it. If you feel great, keep going. That's wonderful. Where can my listeners find you at on social media? On my Instagram, it's LC Schwartz, S-C-H-W-A-R-T-Z 22. And that's my Instagram. And that's what I use the majority of the time. Thank you again, Lindsay Schwartz, for your interview and best of luck in your future. And thank you for being an inspiration to everybody. Thank you so much for having me. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Lindsay, for your interview, and best of luck. Thank you. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.